Don't you people have phones? What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here, and this is Does It Suck, the show where we take a deep dive look at a new game and see what's good or bad about it. Today I've been playing a bunch of Diablo Immortal on my cell phone, and I gotta say, the game is very bad. For the most part, it just feels like the free-to-play, crappy, slimmed-down experience we were all afraid is going to be, and yes, it's also pay to win. But let's take a look at all the aspects of it, because I'm power leveling like crazy, I'm doing dungeons, I'm partying up, I'm seeing the new lore, and I have a lot to say. But before we do that, please like this video. Let's see if we can get this video to 3,000 likes. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. But now, let's dive into hell. So what is Diablo Immortal specifically? This is a very strange game that sits between Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 on the timeline. So a lot of the characters that ended up dying or disappearing in Diablo 3 are here walking around having the best time of their lives. Now, this is a very strange experience because the way it sort of works is that this is just uh, it's like Diablo for soccer moms. It has a simplistic design, very dumb enemies, very easy combat. It's a game that's made to just be tapped at for about 30 minutes a day and then completely forgotten. And to me, that's part of the detriment of it. I love Diablo. I have played hundreds and hundreds of hours of all the different Diablo games. In fact, I've even gotten the Platinum Trophy for Diablo 3 on my PlayStation and done separate hardcore playthroughs of all the different games. In case you haven't realized it, the Diablo saga is incredibly deep. Like, they really pride themselves on being as brutal and difficult as you want them to be, but they can also be very, very fun. Now, the way this controls is all via touch. Now, there is going to be a PC version of this game coming out tomorrow, I believe, but as it currently stands, you can only play this on your cell phone. There is some sort of controller support, but I decided to play this purely with the touch interface since apparently that's the intended design, which still kind of blows my mind. Now, the way this works is the left side of the screen controls you, so think of it as like an invisible joystick, and the right side is these big bubbles, which are your different attacks. Now, there's separate classes like Barbarian, Crusader, Necromancer, wizard, a lot of the people that have existed in the other games. Now, I love the Necromancer a lot, so I decided to play that. Well, what you're going to notice very quickly is not only is everything dying super fast, but everything in this game is based on a cooldown system. There is not mana. There's no sort of limited resource. You pretty much just tap your spells again and again and again until they go on cooldown. Now, for me, this is abilities like Corpse Explosion. If I kill an enemy and they're laying on the ground, I can detonate them like an organic grenade. I can also summon up mage skeletons, turn myself into a ghost if I'm trying to escape, or do a big bone scythe, which is like a short area of attack. Now, all this stuff is very, very quick, but it's also just so ridiculously dumb. The biggest issue I have with this game, more than anything else, is that Diablo is, at times, very savage. I appreciate those times when you die to a boss and you need your friend's help to try and beat it. Well, in this game, everything is made clearly to be as easy as possible. Enemies hardly fight back. Some of them walk so slow and are so ridiculously broken, like it's just hilarious that they think that this is an appropriate difficulty balancing. I mean, I feel like this is sometimes the problem with free-to-play games is that you want people to level up that way they can start engaging with the tons and tons of microtransactions. Now let's quickly talk about that because I'm sure this is the topic people are going to be the most curious about. There is a wide-ranging store in this game. Now, this is everything from cosmetics to buy cool costumes, different spell effects, all sorts of stuff like that. But you also can completely break the experience as soon as you're willing to swipe your credit card. Now, the way this works is that instead of just directly buying gear or like straight up just purchasing legendary and ancient relic items and stuff like that, instead the way this works is you buy crests and you buy these enchantments. Now, anybody who's ever played Diablo knows that the way you get the very best gear is from rifts. These are like randomized dungeons with different enemies, different elites, different bosses that appear in them. Defeating the last boss in this randomized dungeon gives you some very beefy loot. Well, in this, you can use crests to further enhance these rifts, giving them more bonuses, more loot, better rewards. 
Well, you buy crests with real money. You get a free crest every single day, so you can try it out. It's certainly that first tasis free drug addict style gameplay. But if you want the best riffs, the best crests, you're going to have to pay two or three bucks. Now, to me, this does suck because people who are going to swipe their credit card and are going to be paying real money are going to be leveling faster, they're going to be gearing faster, and they're going to be a lot stronger than you, especially with these microtransaction enhancements. Now, these are buffs to your gear. You can put this on any item you want, but it can deal out additional damage. It can stun enemies sometimes. It can create passive shields that actually absorb damage make no mistake if anybody in the comment section tries to defend these microtransactions this is pay to win this is directly the developers enabling you to pay money for enchantments that are ridiculously stronger than the rest there are times when i was doing like a thousand damage for a good crit and i could actually attach gems and enchantments to my gear that would make it do an additional 800 damage meaning that by paying like five dollars i could double my damage per second this to me is absolutely unfair especially because right now as the game stands it's kind of weird how fast you level up diablo immortal clearly wants you to get to that end game tier as quickly as possible because that's sort of when the game truly begins i love a bunch of battle net projects i've played a bunch of blizzard games but they're sort of the things where you like you level up you complete the axe you explore some haunted woods and stuff and then the game technically starts for real this game you get a level pretty much every five or six minutes if you're leveling a lot if you're choosing to kill elites if you're doing randomized quests you can hit max level which is 50 relatively quick but additionally that does bring me to the tons of randomized content this is definitely the one part of the game that i do enjoy and i hope they take the ideas of this and add it into other projects because the way this sort of works is that you know diablo's always had randomized maps while you're going around and exploring and checking out all sorts of spooky locations that are enchanted by terrible demons the maps would shuffle themselves around ever so slightly so you never had the exact same experience twice well, this game goes one step further than that and creates randomized quests. People will randomly show up and ask for your help. People will ask you to go and take out a particular monster or try and save a particular objective, like finding a wedding ring and something like that. And it's cool that the game does feel much more very natural in that sense especially because this has randomized multiplayer people are just perpetually dropping into your world if you're doing a certain quest people can just appear for a short period of time in your world it makes it feel more like this real lived in experience which you haven't had much because all the other diablo games did focus on a lobby based system you'd have to invite a specific friend to your world to run around or joining a small lobby it really makes the world of sanctuary feel more permanent more concrete more actualized and i do really respect that i also do sort of find myself kind of loving the art style of this game now diablo in general i'm very obsessed with the diablo lore with the diablo universe i've read all the books I've seen the comics, I've constantly trained to beat all the games and stuff like that, and I've always liked the fact that this is a world that is so fun and yet just so screwed. And they've captured that to a surprising degree inside of Diablo Immortal. Like, graphically, the fact that this is just on my crappy little cell phone and it manages to look this good, the fact that the sound design is so great, the voice acting is so great, a lot of these characters that unfortunately perished in Diablo 3 are back, and it's cool to just see, like, Deckard Kane walking around and talking and helping us out again. It feels very, very nostalgic and very modern simultaneously, and I have to admit that as a geek i did completely just eat that up it's cool that this is there there is also a lot of like dungeon based systems where sometimes a random dungeon will appear and you can go into it now some of these are quest based when you go into these this is when you can select to either form a party with randomized players invite specific friends or increase the difficulty this game is one of those times where if you want you can make it harder to get a lot better loot much more experience points, but even when these dungeons are truly at their best and we are fighting big cool beasties and stuff in the darkness, it still feels very much like a cell phone game because honestly, when you die, you can spend microtransactions to revive at your body. If you screw up, a lot of times it is just a matter of auto walking back to your corpse. Like, 
This game feels very, very unfortunately autopilot. And as a Diablo fan, playing this on a cell phone, it just doesn't feel good. If I have to just sum this up down to the original question of does it suck, I would say absolutely yes. Do not play Diablo Immortal. It is a free game. Maybe when it comes out on PC, I'll try it again just to see all the different ins and outs and level up. But I can't imagine actually spending microtransactions, and I can't imagine playing this for longer than a single day. I don't care about the battle pass. I don't care about the login bonuses. I don't care about all the stupid, pervasive microtransactions and loot boxes. Screw this game, and please don't mess up Diablo 4. Well, these have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Oh god, there's also a bunch of login errors. Can I even mention that at the end? The game keeps crashing because it's based on Battle.net, and Battle.net servers are very rickety. Man, just f fix your game. Make a good game. Make a real game. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.